Uh, and as I mentioned, education, I, I'm going to talk about education every time that I'm on, a couple, couple minutes, uh, to talk about the fact that lost learning time is happening. Uh, it's not uh, through anybody's fault except COVID, and COVID is our enemy, and we're going to defeat our enemy, uh, and it's impacting our students. And it doesn't matter whether our students are coming from uh, high income or low income, moderate income, minority, non-minority, public school, private school, boys or girls, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, everybody is uh, at a disadvantage right now. We need to do intentional strategies that um, will help uh, fill in the lost learning time that's going on right now. And I'm, I'm proposing that we uh, really double down on the idea of municipal education departments like uh, I opened up in Cumberland uh, in 2007 and has been operating uh, on a 52-week uh, year, a year schedule since then. And thousands of kids have, have gone through uh, <clears throat> the Office for Children and Mayor's Office for Children and Learning in Cumberland, uh, reading and math and science and art and music, um, different leadership programs, different robotics programs. <clears throat> we need to really make sure that we do everything we can to do that, distribute a strategy like that in every, every community in the state of Rhode Island. And, and we can be specific about the needs in any particular community. And communities that have more population than Cumberland, again, they need more than one, right? They need more than one location. They need to strategically locate it throughout that, throughout that community. So we'll work on that, and then we'll certainly work with the ride and and uh, and uh, and the uh, the teachers and the and the people who represent the teachers and our parents. Uh, you know, we'll be launching a one of our transition team uh, efforts. Will be in education, and we'll get that off the ground. I think it's the beginning of next week. So this week we're doing on equity justice issue, so we'll get that off the ground. And if you have an interest in kind of helping us in the in the transition as we transition from Lieutenant Governor, Governor, just call our office. Uh, if you have some thoughts about how you can make our state a better place to live, call our office. We, we'll definitely hook you in and, and I'll, <clears throat> we'll, we'll, we'll connect. And uh, we do have hundreds of people right now that are participating in our effort, but there's always room for more, right? There's always room for more. And we wanna make sure that uh, your voice is heard. So call our office anytime email us and um, you see that on that two 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 three seven one. So I think that's where we are right now. Uh, I, I can tell you that we'll have more about our transitioning uh, into in, as, uh, as it unfolds, but um, we're still waiting on the, the confirmation of Governor Raimondo in the uh, U.S. Senate uh, and then that would trigger um, her swearing in in D.C. And, and it'll trigger my swearing in here in, in Rhode Island. So let's start off. Let's bring on uh, Mark and uh, Joe Rodeo. I'm glad Joe's got his mask on. That's good. And I'm sure that Mark has, will have a mask on as well. So, and the way you wear it too, is it goes over your nose and under your mouth, under your chin. Oh, very good. You guys so, get A's. Okay. I don't know whether you get A's or not. We'll have to wait for Liz to come on and, and, and she'll greet. So, so Governor, yeah. in my preparation for retirement, as you can see, I have a new mask and these are all uh, flamingos. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Flamingos, is that a sign of things to come? Oh, that is a sign of things to come, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. So well, that's um, great. I, I hear it's uh, a little warmer down in, uh, in that neck of the woods where the flamingos fly uh, than, uh, than this neck of the woods where I think I still, I tell you, I do a little bird watching out of the window now. We have these we have these cardinals out there, blue yeah. jays, a couple other things. We have, a, we have actually an eagle that flies over our... Uh, our property every once in a while and, and lands perched on our roof. So, yeah, so, but no flamingos. We've got no flamingos. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I've got two, two in a row. I've got two new ones. I have one more I'm going to, uh, you'll see next week. Uh, but Governor, I just want to let you know that we did some reconciliation and I went in on, and I apologize. These are Friday's numbers, so they're not actually up to date as of this morning, but on the first draw, there's 837 loans as of Friday for $24.5 million. Average loan size is approximately $29,500. So it's really showing you that it's concentrating on the very small of small businesses. On the, uh, on the PPP second draws, we did a reconciliation on that as well. The numbers went up considerably from the from the week before. The uh, jump in 700 actual loans, uh, 5805 for 559 million, 568, 820.67. Um, there was also a jump in the uh, actual loan size as well, so it's up to 96,000. 
394. So it, 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 it's a little bit higher, but it's still within that range, Governor, that shows that there is, you know, a, a focus on the small business community. We've done a lot of, I will tell you, this is my third Zoom in a row. Uh, we've done a lot of Zooms to try to get out to people. There is money PPP available. There is other assistance available. And I think people need to start looking at that. Today, I want to concentrate on one specific thing because there, it, um, you, you see the, uh, uh, the email address. We're looking to do some statistical analysis. And we've had a lot of calls from people who actually started a business after uh, 215. So if you've started a business after 215 and you're in need of help, please email us at the uh, email address that's uh, currently on the screen. <clears throat> the governor, the reason why I say this is while the PPP is not available to those businesses and neither is the idle because you had to be in business by 215 in order to be eligible. That's 2020, right? <laughs> that's correct, 215, 2020. Yeah. The agency, because we received additional funds from the uh, Economic Aid Act, um, is they basically gave us the funds to pay, uh, pay the first six months of uh, principal and interest for 7A and a 504. I, I will tell you, if you're a business that's in need of cash right now, if you need working capital, or you need to buy a piece of equipment to have the agency, the federal, you get a $100,000 loan and the agency to pay the first six months of that loan uh, for principal and interest, that, that's a tremendous advantage. So while there may not be specific PPP uh, elements that you can go for, this is certainly, you can go, you, and there's no fees to the borrower and no fees to the lender. So we're, we're seeing a lot of people who are looking for actual working capital or even equipment capital, and we're encouraging people, Governor, to go out and to actually find that capital that they need. This is a liquidity issue. This is something that you and I have talked about for a very long time. We need to get cash into the community. So that's kind of my pitch today. And the other thing is, you know, businesses don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. If you need help, ask for it. We're here to help you, uh, as well as the Small Business Development Center. We have experts at SCORE who are volunteers. These are not these are not people who are retired. Actually, most of the SCORE volunteers are actually own and operate their own businesses. We have the Veterans Outreach Center here in Providence, and we have the Women's uh, the Center for Women and Enterprise. This is here to help you. So I'll kind of leave it there, Governor. Yeah, you got anything, Joe? Thanks, Mark. Appreciate the update. Uh, you know, one of the things we get a lot of questions related to are um, folks who have a first draw, um, maybe either have their forgiveness application in and are waiting to hear or are waiting to submit. Does that impact their ability to apply for their second draw, Mark? No, but what, what they have to do is they have to have spent their first draw before they could apply for the second draw, Joe. But okay. but the interesting part about that is you, you need to, I, and I understand, we've, we've had a lot of discussions with lenders where they're saying, oh, well, you know, um, we're not ready yet because we're going to stand up an individual platform. And that's what they're doing. Some of the bigger lenders are standing up their own platforms, which will feed right into the SBA platform and make it a lot easier. Some of the small Thanks. lenders are, are also doing that. But I think the bottom line is, you know, uh, you have a tremendous amount of time from the time that you've actually spent the money and the first draw to getting forgiveness. Uh, we're running a little bit behind based upon what I've been told on certain ones. Uh, I think if you're over two million, it's running a little bit longer than 90 days, but the, the, the long and the short of it is um, forgiveness is gonna be granted to those who use it properly. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, a lot of confusion about that. So I just wanted to correct that. You do yep. not have to wait to, to finalize your forgiveness to apply for something. No. No, absolutely not. Ben? Hi, Mark. Hi, everybody. Uh, so we have one question for you today, Mark. That's um, it. I have, to, I have to move everybody along. We only have a half hour right now. Uh, All right. SBA question. Please provide an update on SVO and what's the best way to have a conversation with RISBA staff on trying to access eligibility of SVA versus PPP as we hear the clock ticking? Yeah, you know, um, I, I just had this very discussion with a number of people this morning. It is a huge issue. Um, uh, the shuttered venue operators grant is, it's a grant, it's a pure grant. The problem is it's being stood up by the Office of Disaster Assistance, and I'll kind of leave it right there. Um, but the, the, the bottom line is uh, you can't, and, and we had a discussion this morning that you, actually you cannot apply for a PPP loan, otherwise you're gonna you're gonna be ineligible for the shuttered operated shuttered venue operating grant. Um, 
we don't have the specifics yet. You know, it, it, they keep telling us the frequently asked questions were posted last Friday on the SBA website. Um, I actually got calls from two United States senators, one from our state and one from another state, asking me what my interpretation of question 15 was. And I'm, I'm trying to figure that out. So if I'm having a problem and they're having a problem, then uh, Governor, you, uh, we know that this is important uh, and I am, I am concerned I will have a call with Washington this afternoon as with all the rest of my colleagues across the country. And I'll be sure to raise this again because I know it's important. Uh, but look, go look at the frequently asked questions because there, it really did clarify a lot of different aspects that I wasn't clear on. But for the PPACs, for the, for the uh, Trinities, for a lot of those other venues, I know that this is really important to them. Mark, thanks. Looking forward to working with you on a loan strategy that uh, Stefan and I are starting to talk about. So we'll be pulling you in shortly. Sounds Secretary. good, Governor. Thanks, Mark. Bye. Good to see you. Secretary, oh, good. I'm glad you got. I'm glad you got that mask on. Yes, Stephen. sir. That's yes, good. Sir. And it's and a good one. You got it well positioned, and I think yes. you'll get an A, an A plus to, from Liz. I think when she comes on. <laughs> I look forward to Director Tanner's judgment. Um, uh, as you have pointed out at the weekly press conferences and on these calls, the quality of the mask matters. This is a KN95, and I just wanted to say very quickly, you can buy these online and buy these at stores. This is not the N95s, but they're high quality, so I recommend them. Yes, and then you got to <clears throat> keep on trying to make the, the supply available at the least possible cost for... Uh, for our businesses, you know, that's what they're going to need. Yes. And, I, and you were on a call yesterday with uh, the coalition. Thank you for joining in. And thank and you. I mean, you know, I think we made it very clear that the masks are here uh, for the uh, immediate future. Yes, sir. Uh, they are. And we're going to work on even helping businesses regarding masks that's yet to come. And I'm, I'm grateful to you, Governor McKee, and to Chris Parisi for inviting us onto that call. And frankly, uh, for your leadership, Governor, and Chris, in helping us get some more flexibility in the restrictions. Yeah, so I, I think that, you know, that was talked about yesterday, but why don't you share kind of the things that, uh, you know, going through your mind and, yes, and relating to, to commerce, uh, you know, that are on the horizon and things that, uh, besides, you've been a great, great supporter of the PPP SBA loans, right? I mean, that's something that you've really taken yes, an active role in. We, we, as a matter of fact, uh, with your encouragement, Governor McKee, we just did a webinar this morning. Um, uh, Mark Hayward participated in that. Thank you again, yeah. Director Hayward, and an array of, of, uh, of technical assistance providers to build on Director Hayward's comments on PPP. Now is the time to find out how to apply and to apply, whether you've already done it in round one or whether you're new in round two. And we have an array of technical assistance providers uh, paid for by Commerce, by the Rhode Island Commerce Organization, uh, and let me list those out. The Center for Southeast Asians, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Rhode Island Society of CPAs, the Multicultural Innovation Center, SCORE, Rhode Island SCORE, and the Small Business Development Center, SBDC. You don't have to remember those. Go to the CommerceRI.com website. They're listed there. In addition, as Governor McKee knows and has encouraged, we've also reached out to the banks and lenders all over Rhode Island that are willing to accept first-time applicants. So if you are if you have a banking relationship and you did a first draw in the first round, please obviously feel free to go back to your bank or credit union. But if you're looking for a bank, if you're an unbanked business, or if you just haven't done PPP before and you don't know where to go, there's a set of 10 and, and climbing banks in Rhode Island that have told us that they're willing to do it that they're ready and, and willing to, to consider applications. That list is on commerceri.com as well. If you missed this morning's Facebook Live, go to the Commerce RI Facebook page and the entire presentation is right there. And there's information on how to submit questions even if you missed the live presentation. And with Governor McKee's encouragement, we're setting up some more of these, so stay tuned. Yeah, it's something very important. I think we got to the end of March to get as much money as we possibly can. And, and I know that you're working uh, with uh, our um, DOA uh, about uh, potentially coming up with a, you know, a, a strategy on some of the CARES Act dollars from last year rolling over into some grant strategies that we haven't really defined yet, but uh, right. 
We're making progress on that, right? We are. We're looking for every last dollar. We're looking to make sure that no dollar goes unspent. And as Governor McKee has encouraged us all along, making sure those go to small businesses first and foremost. So we're working on that right now. Yeah, and when we when we kind of identify the amount that uh, you know that is available, we'll get to the we'll get to the small business groups and kind of get their feedback of where they are right now and where how is the best way to use those dollars to um, you know to, to buy time. That those grants are buying time. The PPP buys a lot more time. There's a lot yes, more money in the PPPs than there would be in the grants. But I think we do a combination, and as like you say. You know, with this incremental flexibility, which you started last week, thank you so much for your thank you. effort again. I mean, uh, you know, it's been a while. Uh, you know, you, last week I said that you were very helpful with the businesses. This week, you were extremely helpful. Uh, you know, over this weekend with the uh, you know having dinner at the at the uh, at the bar at the bar stools, which is what yes. I know we've got some very positive reaction to that. Jeff. I'm so glad. Do you want me to say out loud what those recent changes are, sir? Yeah, say what they are, and then, uh, you know, I know that we're kind of looking at Time. other areas right now that we can certainly uh, talk about uh, whether that comes this week or next week, but uh, they're coming. Absolutely. So um, as viewers of this show recall, we've done a set of changes, and this may have affected your businesses, so you know very well. A full week ago, we did gyms and sport facilities where we uh, increased the flexibility on how many people could be inside, one person per 125 went to six feet spacing from 14. We opened up for catered events from 15 attendees at a catered event to 30 and to 50 for weddings with testing for all involved. And we opened up for some return of office personnel, 33%. This past few days, uh, starting this past weekend, as Governor McKee's uh, explaining, we did some more, which is to say we opened up for venues of assembly, that's movie theaters and performing arts centers, and it's houses of worship. So that's churches, synagogues, and mosques, up, up to 40% of seated capacity, up to 125 people in any given case. And we also did open up bar seating at restaurants and at bars and pubs. So we did so because uh, as Governor McKee has pointed out at these press conferences, our positivity levels way down. We were in the threes last week. We we're in the twos, 2% 2 zone this week, which is not to say we can stop wearing our masks. We have to keep wearing our masks and keep your distance and, and all the safety protocols because things can spike very quickly. But the bar areas are now open under these conditions. Maximum of two households and four people. Six foot spacing at the bar unless you do have plexiglass in place between the parties that kind of horizontal plexiglass in which case it's three feet distance with the presence of plexiglass 90 minute seatings massachusetts is doing this too it just enables us to have frankly more customer flow to restaurants but also fewer people putting uh, particles in the air at, for any for any extended length of time and we did return to an 11 p.m early closure later than that 10 and 10 30 scenario an 11 p.m early closure the public health officials of the state were willing to accept that and governor mckee and we were able to proceed with that we know it's been successful in this first weekend and we're to the governor's point we are looking at what more flexibility we can provide to any number of venues and businesses around things like ventilation being provided and things like use of testing to open up some of the restrictions that still exist. Yeah, and I'm going to make a little uh, plea to the uh, the customers out there. You know, not uh, let's help these small businesses. Let's follow the protocols uh, to you know to the nth degree. We we can help our small business. If you're a customer out there, you're doing business with a uh, small business out there. We can help our uh, you know increase this footprint, create more incremental flexibility. And if you're following the protocols as customers. That's going to help these businesses. So don't be fighting it. You know, make so sure important. that you're make sure you're 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 really collaborating with our small businesses. We want to make sure that uh, we're doing as much business as we can in the state of Rhode Island, and that's one way our customer base can help out, Stephen. Yes, yes, they can. It's so important that people do take those efforts: masking, distancing, washing, cleansing all of those things that are necessary to keep us safe because that's what will keep our businesses open. Absolutely. All right, Stephen, well, thank you again. And, and, and I tell thank you, you I know, 
coalition really appreciated you joining that call yesterday. Uh, and we just keep those lines open and we'll just make sure that, you know, we want to stay positive, but we want to test negative. And so we got, you know, we got to follow the protocols to make that happen. Hi, Matt. Thanks. All right. for Thank you all very much. Thanks again to Chris Parisi and the entire coalition. Thank you again. Okay. Nice job there, Matt. We like that. Oh, absolutely, Governor. I know we're pressed for time, so I'm I'm willing to go quick here. Okay, let's go rattle it off. Okay, we're we're hovering still around eighty thousand a week. We had eighty three thousand people request a payment last week. Uh, I happen to think by just taking a look at the the dashboard that we have that we are starting to see more people work part time, and so that includes anybody who requested a payment, not people that are just out on benefits uh, for their whole week's paycheck. Um, so keep certifying, folks. If you have any questions at all, please go to the website, dlt.ri.gov, and try to find some information. I'm working with our web developer to make uh, some new graphics and to make it a little easier to find information. We know there's an awful lot to tell you, and there's only so much space. So we want to be clear and try to provide uh, some infographics for you that might be helpful. But keep look there first before you call. Then if you need to call, call 415-6772. That's our call center. We are still taking, uh, we're helping 1,000 people a day, which is great. We're back up to 1,000. Uh, we had shifted some resources, so then we went down a little bit. Now we're, yesterday, 1,033 people were helped. Uh, we're going to keep doing that and hopefully be able to get closer to 1,500 people a day. But far more people call. And so we're, we're hoping that we can help you by providing information online uh, and just telling you to keep certifying every week. The 1099s for taxes went out. All of them are now out and have been postmarked and put in the mail. Everyone should have them or have them very soon. If you receive a 1099 and you did not file a claim last year and you didn't know one was filed in your name, unfortunately, that means that somebody had your name in your social and they used it to file a claim. It's called imposter fraud, and that's what we've been dealing with this, time, this whole time. There is a link on our website right in the homepage where you can report a fraudulent 1099. That will put you on a work list in which we will work from that list and provide you a corrected 1099, which will give you zero responsibility to any tax payments or, uh, that are required for any benefits paid under your name. There are no tax liabilities for anyone who is a victim of fraud. None. Not a penny of taxes are due if you are a victim. And so please know we will get to it. We will fix it. Right now, we have a number of people on that list, and we're working through it every single day. Uh, the other thing about 1099s, I've got a number of people that have called in and said, you know, mine's wrong. I didn't get that much money. And while, of course, they can be incorrect because something could happen, Every single one that I looked at was right. And the issue was people either didn't realize how many payments they had gotten. Um, and that's partially because we need to do a better job of providing like a, a benefit balance statement, which we're working on with some new technology. But think about it and take a look at your bank account. Uh, all of the benefits that are paid are taxable. Even if you've had taxes withheld, you may owe some more taxes because it's one tax rate that comes out of everybody's claim. And so based on how you file, there may be some owed at the end of the year. But every payment that came to DLT, whether it be your regular unemployment, pandemic unemployment, $600 extra weekly amount, the amount that FEMA put, through, put out, which was $300 a week, the governor's pause boost, which was $200 a week, or now the extra $300 a week, all of those payments are taxable. And so the gross amount of those payments is going to be on that 1099. If you have a question about it, please call us. Try early, try often, try late in the day. Uh, that's it. Okay, Ben, you got something? I do. Oh, I took the wrong one down. I'm going to move on. Uh, Matt, I got two quick questions for you. Number one, first of all, if you have a question that is just that you are having an issue getting through to unemployment, uh, like like Matt said, later in the day, Saturday mornings, if it's a if it's an issue that continues to happen, ltgov.ri.gov, the email address that's going on the bottom, email them, Shay will uh, send it over to Matt. Jody says, if you are collecting on and off due to schools closing, et cetera, do you stay on extended uh, when benefit ends, when benefit year ends or open a new year? So confusing. So you, the re re rules require you to file a new claim when your benefit year ends. Think of it this way. A claim lasts for one year from the week that you file. After that year, you need to start a new claim. If you're not eligible for some reason, then we can extend your old claim. Okay. But that's message. A message comes up when you certify that tells you what you have to do the following week. So if it says file, please file. Okay, uh, Matt. If someone has an um, had an imposter fraud claim but wants to file a legitimate claim, will that be possible? It's absolutely possible. We need to take down the, the fraudulent claim and build the new claim for you. 
The best way to do that is by calling 415-6772. If you're involved in these sessions, go ahead and reach out to the Lieutenant Governor's Office. They'll get in touch with me and I'll take care of it. Final question. Are the letters we get with name, social, actual salary info from DLT or fraudulent? If it comes on DLT letterhead and it's a notice of either, a, it's called a monetary determination or a notice of a claim filed, then it's probably a legit statement that somebody filed in your name and the system generated that notice. That's when you should report to the DLT.investigations at DLT.ri.gov website, I'm sorry, email address, or the Rhode Island State Police on their website. They have a link that you can report fraud. Thanks, Matt. Again, thank you. Thank you to staff. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Right, Hello. Hello. Yeah, you got yours. Where did you shop on that one? Where did you get that one? This one again is from the Etsy store from Coffee Depot in Warren, my favorite place. That's where I get nice. all my masks now. So nice. Looking good. So I gotta appreciate being number four. I'm the cleanup hitter. You know, I, I don't have you a lot know. of time here, but uh, uh but I'll the, say you hit the one that you put the one that can hit it out of the park and uh, that's right. The cleaner spot. Grand slam coming your way. Grand slam. Yeah. Um, just a few things to talk about today. So we had a meeting this morning. We talked about where the spikes are. So as much as all the numbers overall are really good right now, we're seeing one area of spiking, and that's with offices, right? So for those of you who have offices or you have indoor work, we're seeing a little bit of a spike in that space. And we think it's, again, from this lack of mask usage. You got to wear your mask. Maybe you wear two, depending on what you do, what you're doing, right? So really want to encourage um, offices to have the masks on. Same thing with the confined spaces like cars. You gotta wear a mask if you're in the car with somebody who's not in your family. And again, maybe two if you're in the car with them. So any confined spaces, break rooms, lunches, smoke breaks, things like that, that's where we're seeing problems right now. Otherwise, everything's looking pretty good. And we, fingers crossed, we're thinking it's gonna be for a couple of weeks uh, before we see a spike again. That said, there's more testing available right now than there ever has been. So if your business needs any kind of testing, it's, it's everywhere, right? So if you don't know where to go, you can reach out to the LG or, or to me and we'll connect you with it. But as a business owner, we're um, hoping that you're going to encourage your employees um, to get tested on a regular basis uh, before they come and that you'll be quarantining them um, if they or anybody in their family gets sick. That's what I got yeah, for today. Yeah, there's more and more of that testing opportunity. And that's one of the real opportunities with us to, you know, to try to help manage this and to contain this virus. And, uh, you know, and we've we've spoken over and over again on, uh, on this on this uh, broadcast as much as anywhere. But. Our whole idea is to contain that infection rates and, you know, the hospitalization rates and, and uh, you know, and sadly the, uh, the mortality rates and then get the vaccines out as quickly as we can. So, Liz, thank you for your leadership there. Very important to, uh, to the small business community for sure. And, and your participation here is very, you know, I know that the people really uh, like the fact that you're here talking to them and accessible. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, Chris and Molly. I tell you, we're going to call this like the Liz Tanner effect, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, we can label it the, the mask, uh, continue the mask, we call it the Liz Tanner effect. You know, she's the cleanup hitter, but uh, definitely right. the Liz Tanner effect. Chris, give us a little overview of what's happened, and then Laurie, give us a little the shop local stuff and anything else you want to add in. Sure. Thank you, Governor. So uh, this past weekend, we were able to, and I'm getting a little feedback, by the way. Thank you, Lori. Uh, we were able to go in, uh, sit at the bars, uh, my wife and I, which as uh, Secretary Pryor just mentioned, again, a big shout out to Commerce, Secretary Pryor, his team, and obviously uh, your, yourself, Lieutenant Governor, for getting those restrictions lifted so we can extend that indoor dining to the bar area. That opened up more seating and was able to help these small businesses. So we were able to support local uh, this weekend down in Newport, even got some local furniture from Ben's Furniture. And, and uh, we were really uh, excited uh, to, to support the local businesses. But when it comes to the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition, uh, as you, as uh, Secretary Pry just mentioned, we've been advocating hard for our small business members, and we wanted to open it up uh, to more of the members that wanted to have a say. They wanted to share directly. We did do the survey a couple of weeks, did get some great insights, and uh, a lot of folks did want to be a part of it. So on uh, next, this upcoming Monday, the 22nd at 5 p.m., uh, we're going to have a call that opens it up 
to uh, any small uh, Rhode Island Small Business Coalition members that wants to be a part of it. So just email us at info at rismallbusiness.org. We'll add you and send you over the Zoom link and uh, we'll give you the invite and you could join so you can ensure your voice can be heard. Yeah, and Chris, that's what it's all about. You know, the uh, the ability to, to be speaking about, you know, and have input, uh, you got direct access, right? You now, I mean, we, you've earned it. You know, the, the coalition with you and Laurie and Justin and all the people that have been working on it have earned that direct access. You're, you're credible. You're credible uh, spokespeople for the uh, for the small business community. So I encourage all the small businesses to take advantage of that. I don't don't go into a, into the sleep mode. You know, <laughs> you know, don't go into the sleep mode. This is not the time to do that. Yeah. And I've said this, Chris, on uh, publicly, and you know, I, I have supported the incremental increases to fifteen dollars an hour. But I also feel as though that it's kind of like uh, when you're taking a college course and you didn't quite get the last paper in. It's an incomplete. It would be an incomplete if we don't take advantage of all the things that we can do to help our small businesses, identify them where the General Assembly can help, identify them where the local communities can help, identify them where the governor's office can help. So we got this great opportunity to encourage people, like you just said, to, you know, to get involved, participate. And the Zooms allow them to a lot of flexibility. It's not that hard to get out to a 15, 20-minute call now uh, from your home or from your a place of work. Uh, during a lunch break, you know, eat your lunch while you're listening in and participating, but um, or early dinner, whatever it might be. But thank you for your leadership, Laurie. Tell us what's going on with the the shop at local strategy. Yeah, I'll be very quick. Um, so, Shop Local Rhode Island is our our business directory. Um, I think the best in Rhode Island, and I know. Um, I keep saying e-commerce, e-commerce. We've done our research. We've gone full circle. So we are about three weeks away from launching um, that into a full marketplace for Rhode Island. I will also say that when it comes to the masks, you can go onto Shop Local Rhode Island and search masks or any other supplies that you might need, and you will find the local businesses that are selling those important things that you need to run your business as well. Um, it's definitely the heart of our, our communities. That's, yeah, that's all I got though. We're yeah. just working away here, trying to get this thing rolling. Yeah. And some of the PPE stuff that came up in the, uh, in the meeting yesterday about what's might be available. And if we've got, we've got testing that's available to kits that are available. We've got uh, other access to some of this, uh, you know, PPE, uh, um, equipment and, uh, whether it's a uh, mask or whether it is a, hand sanitizer. If you're, a, if you're a business out there and, and seek out some help, there's ways that actually that uh, some of that some of the products can be provided at very low cost or no cost at all. Yeah, so there are businesses. There are businesses on Shop Island that are selling. Um, sorry, ugh, feedback that are selling that um, the PPE stuff in um, in bulk. So check it out. Yeah, yeah support our local businesses. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, uh, we'll, we'll okay. hold on tight this week. I know there's a lot of work out there, but, uh, you know, again, thank you to all our guests here. I mean, this is valuable information. And if you're not hearing uh, your um, answers to the questions that you have, you know, contact our office. We have direct access to uh, the SBA on these PPP loans and, and related issues, certainly with the, the commerce. Uh, in terms of any help that uh, is uh, is uh, is going is uh, available now or will be available shortly, and of course the, uh, the our DBR and our DLT with with Liz and Matt, uh, the unemployment issue is still a prevailing. We know that we're waiting on DC, Washington uh, to pass uh, a version of the Biden uh, uh, Biden stimulus package because we know that a lot of our unemployment is sunsetting. We know that a great deal of the dollars that will come in are going to help position the state of Rhode Island. So that we can absorb some of the still some of the challenges that we have financially in our budgets and and our local budgets and our state budgets which are going to be very important to provide the relief to our small businesses if we're struggling on the balance of budget uh but if we're able to kind of fill in those gaps with some stimulus we're going to have more flexibility to help our small businesses it's all it's all hand in hand it all works together so anyways so you know i you know we want to continue to stay positive we want to Test negative, and um, we'll keep you posted on what's happening and everything and everything. And uh, you know, we we'll make sure that we're doing the best we can to help our kids get educated and and help me so help me uh, help support the the idea of I have the here of the municipal education departments in every community in the state of Rhode Island. It's going to make 
a significant difference as it has in Cumberland since 2007. We started in 2007, and it's a great model that we can we can work off of. Ben, I'm good. Uh, thank you so much for your help, and um, and we'll we'll check in next week at this time.